Welcome back to Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. My name is Tobel, this is Sarah, and we are upstairs in our fancy mansion just outside of town, and uh, I have spent some time trying to clear things out a bit so you don't have to wait for all of that to take place, but we are promptly trying to uh, recover from our injuries of the left arm. I did get a little bit beat up going through the town, uh, or going through the, uh, the mansion, but we're overall okay. Now what I'm doing right now is I've got like a crap ton of backpacks strapped to my body and I'm just going through and trying to find any useful items. So things like, uh, you know, right now it's mostly clothing. I'm leaving a lot of these parts, like the two by fours and things, until I can find myself a cart. Now we did have a cart. Let me go back downstairs. Uh, there are, ooh, I almost jumped right off the building. Let's close that window. That's a bit dangerous, right? Uh, we do have a cart in the downstairs area. Let me go back and try to find that. Now, most mansions have some sort of laundry area where they're doing all their laundry. And in that laundry area, generally you can find yourself a cart. Oh, this is what I wanted to show you. Uh, in the other side of the mansion, and this is actually completely separate. There's no connecting entrance from this side to the other side of the mansion. As far as I know, maybe there's like a secret panel or something. But there are some barrels. So thankfully, we do have the barrels that I really, really like to have. Unfortunately, they're so freaking heavy that there's no way we can actually carry that with one arm. So what we're going to have to do is wait for Sarah's arm to heal up, but then I believe I can move the barrels over to near the pool. Uh, let's see, what did I want to go over to? Let's go to the other... Doo -doo -doo -doo, the other stairwell. And go downstairs, and I'll show you that we did, in fact, find a cart somewhere. Now, it wasn't in this laundry room, was it? There's actually two laundry rooms. Yeah, so... So push carts are pretty cool. You'll find them at grocery stores. You'll find them in uh, the basement here when you're, you know, anywhere where they're doing laundry. So let me turn safe mode on, by the way, in case I sprint right into a zombie friend. Here we go. So here is a, uh, a lovely, lovely uh, laundry cart. It has enough wheels. It is made of light frame and casters. And the cool thing is that we could uh, deconstruct this if we have something with bolt turning of two and almost like basically disassemble it, reassemble it upstairs on top of... A, if I, if I search for frame, we would actually make a foldable wooden frame, and I'm pretty sure that means you can fold it, pick it up, and uh, and also take it with you. I think we also have the option, let me search again, uh, do, 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 if I can remember how to do that, there we go, it's a, I think it's a basket? So a foldable, a folding wire basket, we talked about that before, to make this from scratch, we would need to have 40 wires or one wire basket, so I think, as long as we get the tool we need, we could basically remove, if I go to remove here, remove the shopping cart basket, and it is a wire basket, and then we could try to make it into a foldable. So I think that means you can basically pick it up and fold it and then take it with you and then drop it. So that's how you get a laundry basket between Z levels, because normally you're not able to grab this and drag it up the stairs with you. Uh, so let's go ahead. What I'll do for a little bit is run through the rest of the house. What I'm trying to do is just pick up anything that might be useful. I'm getting, you know, anything that's medicine. Uh, sure, salt water, vinegar, not really useful right now, but that's fine. Uh, really good clothing, a clothing of good quality, because eventually we're going to be using this clothing to practice our tailoring. So especially any kind of thread, uh, those are really, really important items. Now, once we hit our capacity, what I can do is shift D to the cart behind us and just dump everything in the cart behind us. So that's what a car why carrying a cart is really, really useful. How much uh, space does it have? A volume of 150. So the same amount that you'll find at a grocery store, like a push cart, you get pretty much the same amount. So super, super useful. Also what I'm doing is kind of going over corpses and checking to see if they have anything that might be of use. So if we're talking about uh, cash cards, if they have any backpacks, those are really what I normally look for and uh, any kind of like, you know, sometimes I'll have like a snack food or something like that. So I'm going to run around for a bit, grab some raw materials, like, you know, basically pipes here, things like that. And I'll, I'll put it all together and we'll be back here in just a little bit. All right. So there are a couple more zombies down the road. I don't really want to get into too many more fights. Our head is actually taking or has taken quite a bit of damage. So I think if your head takes a little too much, you might wind up getting uh, KO'd permanently and we don't want that to happen to our good friend yet why is there what in the world oh these must have been machines that have been completely destroyed so there's just basically raw lead here all right let me oh goodness we almost were in an awkward spot uh let's go ahead and take this upstairs we have luckily you know what's funny we have not gotten an <laughs> knock on wood we have not gotten infected yet 
uh, which is pretty handy. So I'm pretty happy about that. Right, so here's the problem. If we go upstairs, uh, we cannot, I mean, sorry, grab cart. We cannot go up the stairs. However, one great thing is I found myself a wrench. So if we grab the wrench out of there, there it is, capital B. Let's grab the wrench. I think we can start disassembling the vehicle. So let's do the casters first. Uh, let's see, metal sawing of one or more. Do we have... I don't think there's a saw here, but I could have sworn at some point we found ourselves a saw. And that might be upstairs. So let me go run over to the RV and see if we've got those parts. Sure enough, we did have a hacksaw inside the RV. So I went out and grabbed that. Uh, we're going to... You know what? We're going to smack this brainless zombie a bit. Hopefully he's not going to completely utterly infect us but i'd like to make sure that as many of these guys are uh not around our vehicle as possible so we're going to smush him up a bit pair of sneakers great wonderful so let's go back inside i'm going to uh screw some windows here that yeah, we don't need windows we're going to go back and disassemble the rest of this cart and see if we can't build another one with the things we need so examine the vehicle remove the shopping cart basket and I guess we could, we don't really need the frame at this point. We've got the basket. The funny part is uh, we could probably try to carry the basket or we can pick it up. Everything is is uh, is loose. So everything's on the ground right now. So if we want to make ourselves a, now the foldable, I think you need a foldable frame and a foldable basket or just the foldable frame. I'm not 100% sure, but let's do crafting frame. So for the foldable wood frame, we're going to need two heavy sticks and a bunch of nails. So heavy stick. I'm pretty sure we can just run outside and probably find that out and about. Uh, not into the bad stuff. Let's look for heavy stick. Oh, they're actually, uh, yeah, they're when you, whenever a window breaks, they drop heavy sticks. So heavy sticks, and we should find plenty of those with all the broken windows around. Sure enough, we did. We've got tons of uh, two by fours around. Let's just step on this little bit of uh, crap here and see if we can't make it. So frame... Foldable wooden frame. Oh, a tool of cutting uh, with cutting of, of one or more. Shoot. Do we not have, like, a pocket knife or something? That's rather annoying. Let me go over to our pile inside of this kind of ante room here. I thought we'd been dropping some stuff down. Whoops. Uh, do we have anything useful in here? You know what? Cutting one or more. What am I thinking of? Uh, there's, like, a kitchen right here. If all we need is, is straight up cutting. Oh, seriously? There's no, there's no knives in here? I think I saw a knife in... Yeah, here we go. Steak knife, maybe? There we go. That should have the cutting re require. I hope. Right, one more time. Frame. Oops. It would help if I could spell... <laughs> oh, for two. There we go. Foldable wooden frame. We're going to use the heavy sticks. Uh, we're going to dispose of our Bakken. And we have made uh, foldable wield and activate in progress. Wait. Wield and activate the in progress foldable frame. Why do we stop it? Tumbles to the wood floor. Is it because we are clumsy or in progress? How do you actually... That's really interesting. Work on craft. Wield the in progress, yes. Oh, is this like a long-term crafting project? I don't remember ever seeing this before. Work on craft. Wield the... All right, let's tell you what. Maybe it doesn't like the fact that our boken is in our inventory. So uh, let's do... Let's activate our scabbard. Put the boken away. And let's try to activate this again. Is it, uh, is it because we have stiff arms here? Or we're cold, or we're grumpy? You know, is it, is there, is there something else going on that I'm not familiar with? Normally I'm just able to craft these things. Interesting. Let me just drink a bit, I suppose. I'm not sure why our character is so grumpy right now. We are really, really cold. Is it because we're freezing cold? Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go... Are there any zombies that see us, first off? Because if I close these blinds, they're just going to walk right through it. I don't think so. No one sees us yet, so let's close down some blinds. We're going to... Uh, we're going to grab a couple of 2x4s here. And a book. We're going to drop it all inside of... the... Fireplace. I actually need to go find myself a lighter or a matchbook. I'm wondering maybe if it's our our fingers are like freezing cold, and that would make sense, right? You can't 
it's really hard for you to work on things when your fingers are uh, absolutely frigid. It's either that or it's the the uh, the thing on our hand or the uh, the thing on our arm, right? The um, the arm splint. Where do we seriously not have any kind of startifier? Not si all right. Let me let me bounce around and try to find myself a bit of a lighter. And we'll see if we can heat that room up, if that's part of the problem. Or maybe I'll find out. I don't know, maybe there's something else going on. Ooh, uh, they had an actual legit crowbar and a rucksack. Well, we'll happily take that. Thank you so much, Random Zombie. You're such a friend. All right, we've got a fire going. Let me close some doors down. And we're going to stand next to the fighter, uh, the fighter, the fighter jet uh, for just a few minutes. We're still super, super cold. I'm sure it takes a little bit of time, especially to uh, heat up a full room. Let's see if we can keep this fire going. We'll take the book, we'll drop it into the fire. I don't know if you need to, I, I think, now what I've seen before, this might be a good chance to uh, to talk about it. If, uh, where'd it go? Let's do, I think I've got a, a filter on, don't I? Filter, reset, there we go. So splintered wood is next to me, and this is the floor next to the fire. So let's move um, some things over there. Let's also grab a couple of random, I already grabbed the 2x4s from here. Let's grab the 2x4s. Uh, all right. So what you can do when you have a fire going, if we drop a bunch of 2x4s here, splintered woods, what have you, you can go into your construction menu, type in fire, and you'll see this make or mark firewood source. So what you're basically doing is while you're doing an action, such as crafting or reading, uh, the game will automatically pull from this source to keep the fire going. So very helpful if you're sitting there trying to read. Let's see if we can wait for an hour. Our character is absolutely freezing cold. Okay, I'll tell you what. We have a bit of a cold problem, and I know we've been running around trying to get clothing. So, let's uh, let's strip down Sarah. We're gonna we're gonna make this a little bit private. Let's give Sarah a little privacy, please. Thank you. Um, but I'm gonna focus on getting her some brand new clothes that make her uh, much warmer than she currently is, because she is freezing cold right now. All right, I think part of the problem right now is that Sarah has a ton of head damage. And I think it's been getting worse because of the cold. She, her head is actually really, really bad and it's only getting worse. So I'm going to get myself inside of our vehicle. Can we turn the heat on by chance? Is there actually heat inside the vehicle? Isle lights, dome fridge. I've never spotted or seen an option where you can turn on any kind of heat system. So if I'm looking for multiple electronics, I don't see anything like that. But I do remember it is relatively uh, toasty in here. So if we close this down... And let me go ahead and close the blinds here. We should be able to warm up. Oh, it actually still says very cold. Let's go ahead and apply some medical stuff because we are in uh, not the greatest of shape for our head. Let's do... If I can find it. I want to do the disinfectant. Is it frozen? No, it shouldn't be frozen. There it is. Uh, bottle of disinfectant. Let's disinfect our head. Let's also go ahead and disinfect... By the way, when you apply something on the ground, you'll wind up picking it up and putting it into your inventory. So if you're wondering why... It'll move from one side to the other side. When you first pick something up, it will uh, go in your inventory or when you use it. No need to pop the first aid kit yet because we already have... I think we've got some more bandages somewhere. I thought. Maybe not. Have I carried all the bandages with me? Apparently not. Let's go ahead and... Um, let's disassemble. Uh, we'll turn on our headlamp. Let's disassemble a towel. I even made myself a turban thinking that that would give me a ton of uh, warmth, but I think the head damage is actually causing us more problems than not. Alright, so let's do... Can I just do bandage? And make ourselves a bunch of bandages? Yeah, we actually need rags. Okay, that's fine. Let's batch this and make two. And these actually count as disinfected bandages because you do use... Uh, you use them and basically... We'll, uh, what in the world? Container for disinfectant. Pour it in the ground, I'm confused. What do we do with a disinfectant? We don't want to consume the disinfectant. Oh, gosh. There's some left over. Pour it, uh, no, we don't want to pour the ground. Pour it into the container. Plastic bottle. Okay, there we go. I was crafting something that apparently used a lot of extra disinfectant. All right, we got two rags. We haven't made them yet. Let's do the makeshift bandage instead. I don't know what's going on with that. We'll make one. Can we do that? And then can we apply that makeshift bandage to our broken head? Okay, cool. So I don't know if this is going to help out or not. Our head is just super, super cold. We're, we're moving down to chilly now, which is good. So it's a little bit warmer in the vehicle. Very thirsty, very tired. I think I'm going to give Sarah a break, and we're going to do a little bit of food 
and drink and then recovery. Uh, try to get her head back into normal area. Then we'll try to see if we can't craft that foldable cart, because I'm wondering if that's part of the problem. It must be just really cold outside. Can we tell, by the way, what the outside temperature is? We're facing 90 degrees. That's not the temperature. Is there anything that tells us weather-wise? Not as far as I can tell. All right, we'll uh, experiment a bit and try to find maybe what weather might be under, but otherwise I'll let her rest up. So Sarah is awake. She is in much better shape uh, health-wise. She's really thirsty. And the one thing I can't quite figure out, I'm almost positive that we used to be able to drink right from this kitchen thing. I even turned the fridge back on, and it's not the fridge. I'm almost positive it was this kitchen unit. We used to be able to drink right from it. Now, it is damaged, though. So if we look at the kitchen unit, it is damaged halfway. So I'm wondering... I'm trying to see if it says anything about, else about the description. We can repair it once we hit Mechanics 4. Unfortunately, I think we're still far away from that. But yeah, we have 100% water, so we should be really in good shape there. Uh, where are we in our Mechanics life? 30%. So we're still quite a ways away from getting where we want to be on Mechanics. That's going to let us do more repairs and things like that. Alright, so Sarah is no longer in as terrible shape as she was. Her head is still freezing cold. I need to get myself... I think actually if I get a hoodie... And wear a hoodie that will reduce the uh, the temperature a bit. Do we still have our foldable wooden frame? Yes. Okay, can I apply the headlamp? Can I continue working on this, or is it going to go crazy? Sure enough, I cannot work on the craft. What if I remove my... I don't want it to reset all my progress. I could remove my splint. I'm super confused as to why we can't work on this thing. Let's put the arm splint back on. Um, let's go back into the menu. What did it tell us that we needed? What am I doing wrong here? Do I need to keep having these items in my inventory? Foldable wooden frame. Nine minutes might yield 10 minutes and 12 seconds. We've got the skill. We have the tools. Uh, did we like run out of one nail or something? Do we have to have the, the parts nearby? We're going to stand on a bunch of resources here. All right, I'm going to drop it. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it, it got bugged out or something because we were so cold. Let's try to make another one. Foldable wooden frame. What is happening here? Your in-progress foldable wooden frame tumbles to the flat roof. I wonder if it is because of our arm, and it's in such bad shape we have to have both limbs to craft. Oh, here's, here is where the problem is right here. It is, in fact, because we are too weak to wield the in-progress wooden frame with only one arm. So we are stuck, unfortunately, until we're able to fix our crazy arm situation. So I think what we might wind up doing, we've got the crate downstairs. So pretty much all the clothing that we've run through is ready to go. Uh, I could just do a couple runs around the house. And I might do that for a bit. All we need to do right now is really just kill some time uh, while Sarah's arm is healing. So once that's healed up... We should be in much better, uh, a much better place and be able to continue what we're trying to accomplish. So I'll put everything down in one spot. I'm going to go continue to run around, see if we've missed any medicines. I think for the most part, I've uh, picked up everything that I really wanted. And what we're going to do is try to set up that little room as our fancy pants base. Let's grab a steak knife for fun. Uh, fast noodles, things like that. You know what I really would like? I would love to run a furnace long enough to get a room completely heated up. One thing I've been running into a lot is pretty much everything I want to cook is frozen. So I'm kind of curious if we if we heat everything up, is it going to turn everything to mush, number one? Um, but if we would be able to craft, or not craft, yeah, we'll craft food, cook food a bit more. So maybe we'll try to get ourselves a custom... Uh, oh, you know what? We do still have our... Um, oh, cool. When we have our makeshift crowbar on our invent or in our firefighter belt, we're able to use it to pop things open, which is kind of cool. So, uh, oh, we have a friend still. Hello, friend. I don't think I want to fight you right now. I'm in recovery mode. My doctor said not to mess around. Ooh, a hoe. We'll grab the hoe. Never know when you're going to want to start some farming. And I'll move around the base. All right, I'll be back here in a bit after I've made a few more runs. And uh, maybe Sarah's arm starts to heal. Well, it's taking a long time for Sarah's arm to heal up. So I think what we might do in the interim is uh, we do, we've got enough food in the vehicle and water and things like that to maybe do a bit of driving. So I think I might do, um, we, we obviously know heading either to the north is going to get us locked in or heading to the south. We don't really want to take the vehicle all the way through the town of Poltenik because mostly 
there's always a chance that you might run into a street where there is just a wreck and you cannot get around it. So then you're in a kind of an awkward situation, awkward position for your vehicle. So what we're going to do instead, let's make sure we've got enough fuel. Yeah, we got six hours until we're empty, uh, five hours until we are, our battery's completely charged. So let's go ahead and run around a bit. I'm going to try to... How much time does it take? Oh, this is only taking us like seconds to go all these different... What in the hell are you? What in the world? A brain blob. Oh my gosh. It is a gigantic black blob of goo. Other blobs seem to swarm around it. Yeah, maybe setting up a shop in the mansion area near the slime pit is not the best idea. I'm going to stay away from it mostly because I don't know what it does, if it uh, if it spits anything out or what. There's the actual slime pit where all of our slimy friends are coming out of. Let's go ahead and speed things up a bit in terms of vehicle speed. I think I'm going to go down to the bunker and basically just hook west. We're going to take a right turn, go off into the distance. Now, we're not really going to try to go into the bunker, mostly because I don't have an, a military ID card, which is what you will need to get inside. Uh, but I also think that, if I remember right, there is a, a turret right inside of that. So we really don't want to mess with that too much. Now, there's a crater up here. I thought craters sometimes... There's a possibility that you can dig things up in the crater. Is that the case? I don't really remember. I've, I've come across craters before. I think you can dig them up and get rocks out of it. Ooh, uh, we finally saw another road. It is a, it's, This is more of a trail inside of a forest. So let's go ahead and skirt this forest a bit. See if it might take us anywhere. I really want to just find another main road. Ooh, a last man on earth shelter. This might change things a lot. Last Man on Earth Shelter is really nice because it's out in the middle of nowhere. It's not by a giant blob. Uh, it does ha often have some supplies. It's not going to have a ton of things. Sorry, let me slow down here. I can't even see the vehicle because the camera is still recovering. Okay. So the Last Man on Earth Shelter. Oh, there's also a farm in front of us. Are you kidding me? That's awesome. Um, The Last Man on Earth Shelter is really nice because it has the ability... Uh, or yeah, basically to function as your your uh you know your your away from home base, your away from civilization location. Um, can't climb. Oh, I went try to go down or up instead of down. Right. So it is an underground bunker. Oftentimes having lots of reinforced steel in all of your uh, all the different rooms. It's got some food in here. We've got some curry, things like that. It's pretty comfortable, but that might just because uh, we're comfortable because we were just inside of our building. Oh my gosh, a toolbox. This is such a great find. I've never been so happy to find a toolbox before. A toolbox is everything you need to pretty much do most of your basic tasks. And it's all in one container, so you don't really have to mess with it. Um, can I read the thermometer, by the way? Check weather information. It is 43 degrees Fahrenheit. Holy crap, it's freezing down here. History of firefighting. We'll pick that book up. Oh, I'm so very excited. We've got a little bit of ammo down here. Yeah, 9 millimeter. Uh... 9 by 19 jacket hollow point, and there's no weapons. That's okay. There's normally not any weapons. The other reason this is nice is that there's always a pool in these last man on earth shelters. So, and also this um, this furnace here. So you can pretty much set up a little mini crafting station, have everything you need in one location. You can have a lot of storage in here, lots of food. Obviously, it's really, really cold down here. So you're, you're going to have a lot of things getting stored at a good temperature. Thermometer reads 30, yeah, 43 degrees. That is frigid. You also have your own bedroom, a furnace in the bedroom to keep yourself nice and warm. So really, really strong place to... There's also a start where you start the game in a last man on Earth. So it's not only a great thing to find mid-game, but it's also really, really strong uh, early game where you have a nice, safe base. But, so a couple things. We found the last man on Earth shelter. There's also a ranch to the north of us. Now, ranches aren't as good, in my opinion, as farms. Let's go ahead and continue on our way to the north here to check out this ranch. Now, the ranch is nice, though, because just like the last man on Earth shelter, it is a bit out of the way. Uh, no one's really around here, so you're pretty much left to your own devices. Now, the ranch, unfortunately, does not have a well. The farm actually will have, if you come across a farm in this game, the farm normally has a well outside. So you uh, an, an endless supply of clean water, basically. Uh, we could craft one, I think, actually, if we get, let's see, well. Oh, we don't know how to make it. Okay, fair enough. That is something... Oh, you know what? Hang on. It's probably under construction, not crafting. I got that a bit. Yeah, there it is. Water well. So we need survival four. 
a bunch of rocks, two by four, and a tool with digging. So we could make our own water pump or covered well or then a water pump. So that is an option. Uh, this ranch does have a couple, normally it'll have a little bit of food and of course a nice uh, bit of random tools here and there. The ranches are often reinforced. So all the windows are already pre-reinforced, which is uh, kind of helpful. Now it's not really as, as needed because they're in the middle of nowhere. So a lot of the times you'll find a ranch out in the middle of nowhere. What's this up here? A field campsite. Okay. Hey, at least we found another road, though. That's exciting. So it looks like this road goes to Brewster and then goes south to somewhere else. So that might be somewhere we try to explore. Another steel jerry can. A combine or a reaper tractor, which is pretty entertaining. You'll have a couple of uh, farm-related tools you'll see in this building. There's also another building off to the side. Have we come across a ranch before? I feel like I've mentioned a ranch, but maybe that was um, in another playthrough. We'll grab a trowel here just because why not? I love to collect all the tools. This So this is basically uh, where animals were being kept for a while. There's no animals left right now, uh, but we do have some tools, things like that. This is always what confuses me. There's always this room here that is almost like an extra barn. And then there's this, this iron grate. I've never been able to pry open the grate. And I have no idea if it's like, do we need... Can I crowbar? I don't think I can crowbar it. Can I apply my crowbar? I cannot pry that. You know what we could do, I think, is we could pick it. You know what? I'm so... I want to find out what this is. Let's smash those. Let's make a bunch of improvised lockpicks. Let's make, like, ten improvised lockpick. All right. Got my lockpicks. I want to see if we can pick this door. I've never been able to get in these. These cannot be picked. Son of a gun. It's just, like, this metal gate. And I'm... It's like, I really want to just know what's inside of it. I don't know if it's a an underground shelter... Or what, but it doesn't seem to have any way to get into it. It's probably just empty. But I always do wonder. Do we have a uh, headlamp we can look into it with? Oh, is it literally just nothing? Okay, I'm just going to walk away because I just, I don't understand anymore. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is not too bad. The, um, the ranches also have a pond normally in the corner. So you'll have yourself a good source of water as well. So we're really, honestly, we're in really good shape. Apart from our arm. By the way, the arm looks like it has started to recover. Unfortunately, it's taking so long that it's not really feasible for us to, you know, wait in the mansion until it crafts or until it gets better so we can craft again. So I think I might stick with the uh, the plan of just running around right now and doing a bit of exploration while we're waiting for ourselves to heal up. Had a bunch of nails, a solar cell. Sure, we'll take a random concrete mixer. Why not? I don't think I want irradiated oranges. Those don't sound like a tasty treat to me. Hey, a cooking book. Nice. All right. Yeah, pretty happy with that. There's normally some kind of small little uh, shack, or not shack, but a storage thing in here. Just a bit of a closet with some more goods. So, not too bad. It, the ranch is always a good option for a home. Last Man on Earth Shelter is really good for a home. Personally, I think in this situation, I would probably choose the ranch only because it is all in one level. You can come right in, park your vehicle, go right in and sleep if you need to. So we can make a, a bit of a crafting room right here in the middle if we so wanted. So this is an option if we want to move away from the mansion. I kind of want to because I'm not a fan of having the blobs that close. I think they will start to move at some point and, uh, you know, kind of explore their area and possibly get all up in your face. I really need to get that book to get our engine repaired. Our engine is not in great shape. A couple broken windows. Where's our engine at? Yeah, it's still it's still about 50% right now in, in, in terms of its quality, I think, and its health. So I would love to get that fixed at some point soon. Oh, we got to be really careful here. There's a turret right in front of us. Ooh, slam on the brakes. Uh, that's really annoying. So there is a random turret here. Is this when I had another character some at some point? I think I did. This is a... Uh, this is a random character that I played with. <laughs> I found this before, and I completely forgot. There was a random character I generated that was um, super, super ill, and all they had was a house coat and a backpack, and the, yeah, Merlin is a random generated name, and I remember coming around the corner and just getting slaughtered in the middle of the night. So, not a great spot, unfortunately, because the turret is going to pop us. Man, we're so close to a road, and yet that happens. I think we can go around the camp, though. And connect with that road. I'm really glad we stopped because that could have been a abrupt ending to our journey. It's really, it's almost like that's, it's so easy to die in this game. It's so very easy. You're, you take your eyes off the screen. You think, what in the hell? Uh, everything's nice and calm. There's a random lava flow here. 
which can damage your your person. I had a character um, that I had a really long playthrough with before. I went into a room, got a bit trapped, and was I was I thought I was far enough away, but the lava generates so much heat that your character basically melts, and so it was uh, it was pretty rough. A random camping area here. Do we want to take one of these tents? I don't know if it's really needed. I'm going to pass for now. Run on through another railroad station, which does not seem to have much in it. It probably has the same stuff it did before, which was the vending machines. Uh, there's a derelict property to the east. We're actually about to buzz through a small little town here. So this is the town of... I kind of missed it. Uh, Moltenburg. It looks like there's another last man on Earth shelter... Just southwest of Brewster, too. So I'm glad we're moving around a bit. We're, we're at least trying to uh, starting to explore more. We get to know what's around us. Wow, everything here has just burned down. What in the world is happening? Holy crap. This is insane. I wonder if this was the house that that one character started in. Uh, the character that... I think this, the scenario in particular is Really Bad Day, I think. Maybe that's the one they started with. That's so funny. Pretty, uh, pretty empty town. We actually could come through here and maybe do a bit of looting. I would love to try to take some of those uh, solar panels from one of the solar panel vehicles if we've got the tools for it. All right, we are back on the road, finally. Now, we can't go south because there is a turret. Well, I think the turret was on this road here, right at the corner. So we might be able to buzz down that road. There is a brown tee, which is a trailhead, I think. I think this road is only going to go over to the trailhead. The way this vehicle looks, by the way, reminds me a ton of the old uh, Police Quest. When you're in Police Quest, you had to take your two-pixel vehicle and drive it around town, and it reminds me a lot of that. Let's see if this vehicle is nice, and it looks like it's in good shape. Let's see if it's a brand-new vehicle or not. I'd love to find a vehicle with just a fuel, fuel a full fuel tank. Uh, it's a car. Nope, nothing in it. It's in uh, pretty rough shape. What's in the back seat, though? A bottle jack. We already have a jack. I think we actually have our own pneumatic jack if we so wanted to try to use that. So I think I'm going to maybe call it an episode here. We're at a good spot where we have a lot of options in front of us. We could try to go into that other last man on earth shelter that's on the southwest part of Brewster. We also can cruise down to the south here along this main road that goes through. It looks like kind of almost like a, uh, a road that cuts through a um, a national park. So a nice relaxing drive through the forest if I don't go off-road and crash us. And uh, maybe we'll find a couple more locations to loot while we continue our recovery, our convalescence from our messed up road. So thank you all so much, uh, or arm, I don't know why I said road. Thank you all so much for joining me for this episode of Cataclysm. Uh, thank you for supporting Sarah Brown in her adventures. We'll take a look at her stats as always. Uh, 10 strength, so she's getting better, a little bit more on strength. We should be able to start carrying some stuff uh, that we need that we were having trouble with before, like carrying the barrels upstairs, things like that. We're rocking out with our skills, by the way. Four fabrication, three driving, three mechanics, uh, bashing, melee, doing really, really well. I have been reading a bunch of random books here and there, so I'm excited. This is one of my longest running characters, so you know what? That seems like a jinx. I'm going to stop my vehicle and save the game, and we're going to stop right here. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Until next time, take care.